Hello guys, welcome to this new video. So this is going to be question 7 in the November 2023 paper 2. So in this question we're given a dwarf planet in an asteroid belt and we're given the distance of this planet from the sun and the mean power output of the sun. And so we need to determine the mean temperature of Ceres, the dwarf planet, assuming that it acts as a black body radiator. What what this just means is that all objects have this property called emissivity and this is one for a black body radiator which just means that every, all the radiation that is incident upon the surface of Ceres is absorbed by the, temp, by the surface and is used to warm up the planet itself. So, so wait, sorry, it was, it's one, not zero. So if something is perfectly black then uh, it has an emissivity of 1. So all the radiation that it emits or absorb is uh, is 100%. So if there's 10 watts incident on the surface, then 10 watts will be used to um, increase the temperature of it. So here we're given the mean power output of the sun, which isn't completely useful to us yet. As if we imagine, if for example the sun is a sphere, like here, then this power output is is um, split up equally um, among a uh, sphere around the sun as it radiates in all directions. So this is the mean power output of the sun at the distance of Ceres. So for example, if Ceres is a planet over here, then it receives some radiation from the sun, but not this entire power as this power is for the entire sphere around the sun. So we need to first determine how much um, power is incident at the point of series. So we need to see how much power does the sun output per, per area around the sphere. So like if we take out a small little section from the sphere around the sun, we need to see how much power does one square meter get. So the way we can do that is we are just going to divide the power output of the sun by the area of by the the uh, surface area of the sphere around the sun, which is just going to be four pi r squared. That's the surface area of I mean the sur the surface area of the sphere around the sun. And this r we're going to use here is the mean distance from the series to the sun, as we want to know the intensity at this point from from the sun the series so we can just plug these values in and then 4.4 times 10 to the 11 and so this will be 156 watts per square meter so this in fact is called an intensity intensity is just power over area so now we know that per per square meter 156 watts is a incident but there's one more calculation we need to do before we can use any of the formulas which is because Ceres is a planet and so if it's a planet like this it's a sphere as well let's assume then if the incident power is like this it's not going to warm up the entirety of the surface area of Ceres because well first of all it's not the power incident is not even going to reach half of half of the planet so that's not going to receive any um, incident radiation and also here this surface area here half of the sphere has a larger surface area than what is actually being useful as this incident ray only illuminates a uh, circular projection of the planet so this is a circle and it only radiates among this projection of the planet and this only has a area of pi r squared whereas if it would radiate the entire planet then it would have a surface area of 4 pi r squared like we used in the previous uh, calculation so in fact only a fourth of the incident radiation is actually going to be useful uh, power for us so we're going to need to divide this intensity by 4 so we're going to need to do i over 4 
is equal to 156 divided by 4. So then we find that only 39 watts per square meter is actually useful power for us. So this, this is the only power that's going to be increasing the temperature of series at a given moment. So this is what we need to calculate with. And then now we just need to apply the formula we can find in the data booklet, which is this. So the power is equal to emissivity times the Stefan Boltzmann constant times the area times the temperature to the fourth. And then luckily, we know that power over area is just intensity. So if we rearrange it like this, we will find that power over area is just the intensity we have calculated. We know that E is 1 because it's a perfect black body. Stefan Boltzmann constant is just a constant. And then A, again, is just the surface area. And then T to the 4 is what we need to find. So, oh sorry, we don't need the A over here anymore as we just divided by that. That's why we have intensity on the left. So all we need to do now is to rearrange for T and take the fourth root. So that's going to be I over sigma. And so this is going to be the square, the fourth root of 39 divided by 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8. So this will be approximately 160 Kelvin. So this is going to be the mean temperature of series. And in the next question, we're given that the mean temperature is higher than our answer in, in this part because radioactive nuclei in the center are decaying. And we need to explain how energy from the radioactive decay reaches the surface. So what we need to know is that in radioactive decay, radioactive decay, there are the larger particles are being split up into smaller particles of larger velocity. So, so during radioactive decay, we release particles which have kinetic energy, which fly really quickly, pretty much with E kinetic. And these, these particles will collide with the neighboring particles, giving over their um, energy. So they collide with other particles. And then they, these pretty much pass on the energy. So the kinetic energy released by the radioactive nuclei that they have is passed on to the other particles and it continues on like this. And so this is converted into thermal energy as the particles start to vibrate more. Into thermal energy. And this thermal energy is, usually, is here, in this case, um, transferred to the surface through conduction. To the surface through conduction. So there are generally three, three main ways of heat transfer. One of them is conduction, the other one is radiation, and the other one is convection. In IB, we don't learn about convection, only conduction and radiation. Conduction just happens whenever two objects with different temperatures touch each other. They have physical contact, and then the, temp and then the heat travels from the colder object, I mean, from the hot hotter object to the colder object. And convection is when this happens through a different medium, but we don't need to learn that here. So in these energy transfer types of questions, we generally want to mention what kind of um, me what kind of process is happening, whether it's conduction, convection, or radiation. So here it was conduction. And then in this question, they say that at lower temperatures, water undergoes phase change directly from solid to gas. We need to compare the molecular conditions of the solid phase of and the gas phase at the same temperature. So let's make two columns, solid and gas. Well, solid has high intermolecular forces. And because of this, the molecules are close together. 
are close together. And yeah, and also because of this, due to the high intermolecular forces, uh, particles have little freedom to move. They are stuck into a lattice. Little freedom. And then gas is pretty much the opposite of what we have just said. So it has low intermolecular forces. And the, their particles are generally further apart. And they have a large freedom to move. As they are not very closely bound to anything, they're not connected to each other very strictly, so they can move however they want. And since they're the same temperature, um, their, their average kinetic energy will be the same. As a average kinetic energy, well, I mean temperature, is proportional to average kinetic energy. So, so yeah. So same average kinetic energy. As in the question, they said that they are the same temperature. And then we are given the maximum surface temperature. And then we need to calculate the mean kinetic energy of the molecule at this temperature. So here we just need to apply a simple formula in the data booklet. We need, just need to plug in the numbers. Average kinetic energy is equal to 3 over 2 times... Boltzmann constant times T. And we know the temperature. Only thing we really need to watch out for is that this is in a Celsius, so we need to convert it into Kelvin. So the temperature in Kelvin, we do that by taking the Celsius and adding 273 to it. So in this case, it will be minus 38 plus 273, which is 235 Kelvin. And then we just plug in. So this is 1.38 times 10 to the minus 3, minus 23 times 235. This will be 4.9 times 10 to the minus 21 joules. That's pretty much it. And in the last part of the question, this is a little bit about gravitation. We're given the radius and the mass of this dwarf planet. And we need to show that the gravitational potential at the surface is about minus 10 to the 5. So we need to look in our data booklet and see what gravitational potential is. And we will see that it's just minus gm over r. And uh, yeah, here we also just need to plug in the values. These questions were both one marks. These are usually just, just plug and chug. 9 times 10 to the plus 20. Over 4.7 times 10 to the 5. And this will give us minus 1.3 times 10 to the 5 joule per kilogram. And then this is approximately minus 10 to the 5 joule per kilogram. I recommend usually writing down this a precise value and then writing this approximate symbol so that the, your examiner will see that you calculated it correctly and then you approximately show that this is the gravitational potential in this case. So um, yeah, this was question seven in the November 2023 paper and uh, see you in the next one.